Papa Dog and I, we are making a video together. Yes, we are making a video together forever. All right, very excellent. <laughs> yes, you are gorgeous. Yes, you are. Um, and I also I have a milkshake here, and I'm making a video with my party with the the play doh, generic play doh. And it matches, it's nice, so this is good. It's a good afternoon. <laughs> and it is sunny outside, it's beautiful, and I love to see the trees whipping in the wind. I absolutely love it, and I practice gratitude every day, and it is wonderful. There's so many things every day to be grateful for you know most people bypass those things they're so caught up with social society pressure so caught up with this it's, it's absolutely it's it's shocking for me to see how caught up these human brains are with social social interactions social dependencies and society you know and what they think and whether they're gonna be liked or whether they're or maybe they're gonna be disowned or maybe they're gonna be shunned away and all of these things you know i mean if just a little side note here if someone disowns you or shuns you then walk away you know don't don't look back make something out of your life believe in yourself so that's my message for the world always every day and i want to talk about my friend lisa i call her my friend but she's not allowed to have me as a friend okay she was my massage therapist. I had several massage treatments over at her massage studio. I'm not going to say what it is. She's an excellent massage therapist. And she's about my age. She has a son. And she is a Jehovah's Witness. Da, 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 da. It's like red bar across, like, bleep. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Not good. Okay, so, and I appreciated her she appreciated me and while it was a business connection she was herself she was being herself and I liked her so much you know I wanted to be friends with her as like my best friend you know that's what I wanted her to be my best friend and she wanted me as a friend too but she couldn't because the jehovah's witnesses are not allowed to have friends outside of the congregation and i'm not going into the congregation so right there it's not going to happen <laughs> i had many encounters with jehovah's witnesses throughout my whole life so many 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 and I can't count it anymore, how many encounters I've had. And, and it's never made sense to me that what they're doing. It's just completely meaningless. It does, it's just totally bypasses me. Yeah, it always has. So they're not even helping the world. You know, they're, Instead, they're just obscuring things. They're making people more obscured, and they just cause a dependency of their patrons. 
and these is an emotional dependency and these people think that they need to belong to this group to this religion and my friend Lisa she told me that she is she's from a rural area and they had they have her parents have a farm and a small family farm and her she said her father is an agnostic I said what the heck are you doing at the Jehovah's Witnesses? You grew up with an agnostic father. I don't know what her mother believes in, but you know, you had already some influence from a little bit more intellectual, of an intellectual background, a little bit more worldly educated, more cosmopolitan, more versatile more interested in how the whole world works how we're what the, what we're made out of an agnostic father and then you go back to such an archaic religion so th this is what i don't understand and she said she was looking at different religions. She joined the Mormons for a while. That didn't feel right. So she finally found the Jehovah's Witnesses. And that was the right one for her. It doesn't make sense to me at all. As I don't understand it. you know. But I'm not in other people's brains. I just can't. I can't empathize with that. So I can only see things from my own personal brain, from my own personal life perspective. So I don't know what's what's going on with all of these different people, how they function and what their needs are, what their traumas are from childhood and how these traumas maybe are shaping their, their future and maybe shaping certain avoidance mechanisms and certain also certain affinities and also certain fetishes you now i see that in a lot of people and the jehovah's witnesses are not excluded from that from from fetish no okay and they're not excluded from violence or like something that that chris watts did no, they have lots of Chris Wattses also in the Jehovah's Witness religion. So, and I don't know if that religion keeps them, keeps them patched up enough in terms of fearing Jehovah to not do those kind of things. But from the stories that I've already heard on the internet, it seems like they're just a hair width away from going full force Chris Watts. So, no, that doesn't... It doesn't deter people. And I, I'm sure there... Be, and I'm sure there are murderers among the Jehovah's Witnesses and there certainly are child molesters like in massive amounts and just like with all the other religions or any other group of people and and, and cultures and so on child molesters seems like an epidemic in the in the world of humans in general so and religion keeps this the only thing that religion does it enables it it keeps it concealed from the public it keeps it keeps it corrupted it keeps it it makes it a secret and and secrets you know in general was particularly doing that to children keep a secret this is this is our little secret or something like this you know what a, a father would say to his little girl horrific painful you know you just ruined your daughter's life for the rest of her 100 or 80 years 
but she has to live now. Uh, she has to live with neurosis, neurosis and and extreme pain, and emotional suffering, and, and hardship. And I don't even think they realize this. They don't even realize it. They're not even aware. They are so addicted to this. And I also wonder what is it? What is it about? What is it that, you know, that makes adult men be sexually attracted by underaged children? Particularly underaged girls, like under, under pre-puberty, you know. Yes, Papa Dog, we are making a video, and I try to put everything into this 45 minutes or so. And, um, so what is it? I've been thinking and thinking about this. So, I have a slight unveiling about this. I have a slight idea on where this possibly could come from, the sexual addiction to pre-puberty children. I have a slight idea and I think I know what it is. Adults are very neurotic, very, very neurotic, neurotic. N not not erotic, neurotic, okay, so very important side notes, you know, so they're very, very, very psychologically compartmentalized, they are fractured, they're fragmented, that's a word that Jiddu Krishnamurti is using, they're fragmented. They're splintered into, they're splintered away in their consciousness from who they really are, okay? So they become like, they become actors that are not even very good in a play, in a, in a chess game of extreme mental illness. And a, a whole chessboard of like a monopoly play of extreme mental illness and a complete disconnect. I gotta get a pillow. Yes, have I dug? Yes, gorgeous. So. Okay. Yes. So it's complete, they're completely disconnected. And so the adult women are completely disconnected also, you know, they can't even, they can't even paint anything on a canvas because they're so afraid that they might make a mistake. There's no mistake in art, okay, you just paint. But then they are also religious and their religion tells them you're not, or I don't, I have this feeling because I see that the Christians are against modern art. So people aren't even allowed to express themselves in any way. What a horribly monstrous suppression of their own personal beingness. What a what a terrible crime. That's a psychological crime, you know. That's the root of crime, of physical crime. That's a, that's a foundation for physical crime and for people being in a frenzy of wanting to express themselves and not having any kind of outlet whatsoever. So what happens then is they will be probably superficially attracted to a woman in terms of, yeah, adult woman, yeah, let's go, let's go, good, yes, okay. And then after a while, and that's also what I see in that Chris Watts, you know, 
there wasn't even a real connection between the, between him and his wife. I saw this from video footage and, and stuff like this. Because the wife, it, she lives an idea. And the idea is, ah, good looking man. How he is on the inside, no, she's completely cut off from that. So she doesn't see the, she doesn't see the, the neurotic behavior and the fakeness and falseness in that man. And I'm not blaming her. It's this is not a judgment. It's not a judge hammer. This is her own neurosis. This is her own childhood. She has split off from her childhood, okay. and it's all tragic. And she's probably also been molested. I don't know. And I'm not diagnosing anyone. I'm not allowed to diagnose anyone. This is just these are just my thoughts on it. So I saw that lady in a video, you know, very, very cold, very into herself, very narcissistic in a very, very, very neurotic way. Very, very, very like like attached to this needing to be famous or at least on the internet and wanting to be Barbie and having this Barbie Ken as a husband and emotional discrepancies are not seen you know the the coldness points are not seen because she lives in this make-believe fake neurotic world like like someone who is burdened and running real fast in order to just get from a to b just get it over with sort of you know like being burdened and psychologically and under this pressure trying to escape into this fake Barbie Disney world of social media fame and and out of this of course there is no warmth that she can give to this very broken man so they're both broken the man is even more broken than the woman obviously okay and he's also a, a, a raging psychopath of course he needs to be head bolted not be kept indefinitely in a prison that doesn't make any sense that doesn't make sense for him that's just cause him suffering and it, it it is a burden on the tax money you know on the on the fund so that doesn't make any sense all of this and all all this bullshit with defense lawyers oh i've never understood that something like i could never be a defense lawyer my gosh i defend the animals not some criminals my goodness so all of this is so incredibly messed up i don't even know <laughs> I, there's no way I can cover all of this, you know, that is messed up with humans in general. So Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, is that's just one messed up group out of thousands, okay? Just, uh, just another messed up group. So I loved my friend Lisa. And I love my, uh, my friend Lisa. I still love my friend Lisa and I hope she's doing well. Last time I met her, she gave me a very warm hug, even though where she's not allowed to socialize with me. She gave me a very warm hug, and I appreciate this very, very deeply. That came from her heart. That didn't come from her religion. Okay. Just like Christians, you know, when I meet a Christian, and a Christian says the dog goes to heaven, that comes from that person's heart and not from their religion. When someone loves a dog, when someone loves an animal, when someone has an animal in a pouch, they also happen to be in some kind of religion. This love for the dog comes from their heart, from their amygdala in the brain, from the compassion center, from the prefrontal cortex and the hippocampus. 
it comes from a deep feeling of compassion that is very powerful that's a universal infinite energy that is that is the life force energy that is the mother love energy okay that is the most important and most powerful energy is that is the blue god energy okay and so yeah it comes from that energy and they feel that energy and they are open to that energy and they are they are connected there okay with that energy with this love okay what a present that is from the infinite cosmos to have that love to have the ability to have that connection that connectedness to at least you know to some beings if they they might not have that connectedness to many other beings okay but they have the connectedness to their animal and their child and those people already got it all okay that's that's they don't have to be a buddha who loves all okay that's all that matters is you have an animal you have a child and you love that animal my animal is my child of choice okay that is true connectedness to the infinite cosmos that's real love and so when someone also happens to be religious or a christian for example or a muslim yeah even in the Muslim religion, there are some people, I have seen it, there are some people that will suddenly say something that comes from their heart and not from the religion. Okay, most of the time it comes from their testicles. <laughs> that also doesn't come from the religion. But the religion kind of like has already embraced the testicles. But it hasn't embraced the uterus. It, do, it hasn't embraced the love and the respect and the beingness respect for all the other beings, the women and the other beings. So it only respects the male Muslim. So that is about that's what the Muslim religion is, as Gary in Mentum said. It's the raw sewage of all religion okay and that is very well described absolutely spot on so that is the, that's the fact okay so but even in the muslim religion i can meet someone once in a while uh, the women i've met they're all completely destroyed okay they're like they don't even say anything anymore they're they are they are muted and they're trampled down on and they are psychologically destroyed. The men are in a complete act out, you know, which is also extremely neurotic, but they're running fast in that act out of that act out that is also permitted and even and even enabled and even I don't wanna use the wrong word here, it is even rewarded that act out that the men the muslim men are doing so i have rarely seen a muslim woman who actually said who said something out of her heart because they're all trampled down one muslim woman i talked to once and i forgot her name it was a couple of years ago she said to me her life is in danger she thinks her husband is going to kill her any time now because she has been on the internet and he has seen her on the internet and um, they're not allowed to be even on the internet talking to other people because what if they change their mind on Islam, right? Because they see other people that are free and maybe they want to be free too. So that's why they don't even allow their women and children to go on the internet. But they themselves, the men, they go on the internet 
and they flirt the shit out of the internet with other women and they try to enlarge their harems you know the bigger the harem the better huh? i've seen it all i've talked to all of those i know how they are so i met this one woman and she said to me yo you're absolutely right and uh, but it's too late for her and she's actually she's actually from a western country that and and was naive and married into this and um, she said my life is i think she was from sweden those are very naive the stockholmer syndromers very very sad makes me so sad to see this and then you know the wake up call comes when it's basically too late so she married into this and lived in complete suppression with burka and everything and i told her run away run as fast as you can get away from there call help call international help there are international phone numbers to call for help for someone to get you out of there if you if you feel like um, your life is in danger so and there are people that are there are courageous people out there that are helping these women that are rescuing those women and children and animals to get out of that hell and donald trump is absolutely right on with what he said to that candidate lady that muslim lady he's absolutely right go back to your own your own oppressed country and you do that do it there don't come here and and bring that horror into this country okay he's absolutely right donald trump is doing really well very very well so yeah but once in a while i see someone I, from from any kind of religion and they'll say so, suddenly say something that comes from the inner child that comes from kindness and love and then i will reward them and i will point that out to them what you just said comes from you from your inner child from who you really are not from your religion not from your oppression okay it comes from your inner creativity and love love is creativity and they have to think about this for a while because this is a completely new concept for them so they put their minds in it they get into it and and it widens the horizon and this is what i want to achieve in the world with as many people as possible that is my goal <laughs> this is my cherry vegan whole food vegan cherry smoothie with frozen cherries two bananas and soy milk organic soy milk it tastes fantastic it tastes like a dream also a little side note here you know i get misunderstood a lot of times you know when i meet some kind of male body on the internet you know, i see them as my male bodies but they want more and it's not that i'm mad about this you know it's okay you know i understand you know you want to cut some cuddling and uh, i get it you know we all need it i need it too i don't However, I don't, I don't meet with anyone. I don't trust anyone anymore. I, I can't trust people. What I see on the news is horrific. I don't know who anyone is. I don't know what they're, what they really believe. You know, a lot of times, you know, with that Sarat, he told me he's a Hindu. And he even said he's against Islam. So then finally, we got to talk a little bit more, and I thought we were. I thought there was some connection, not a sexual from my side, that was from his side, he wanted 
the sexual connection. I didn't want the sexual connection. But it at least I thought the, the conversation was going somewhere in terms of, you know, psych psychologically. And I thought, you know, I give him the chance to talk about his issues because probably no one else listens to him. And then, you know, lo and behold, at some point it comes out that he that he is a Muslim, you know, but first lied about it. So I don't trust anyone anymore. How can I, you know? How can I trust people? They're probably all I don't know how many men have converted over to to Islam or how many men in the world are Muslim wherever they are, you know, in other countries too, even in Asia now a lot so there's no way I can you know and if I meet the if I find out in a conversation the, the that that connection that buddy connection is over with you know I'm done I guess like finished I'm not gonna there's nothing else to say the only th thing that I can say to them is Islam is violence and I want nothing to do with it okay you you deal with this yeah don't bother me with it that is what I say in the end and I block them because why should I waste my time with this they are, they are also not receptive to what I have to say but once in a while once in a great while I've met someone who was a Muslim, but who, you know, who accepted that I'm against it, who didn't take offense, who didn't take that, like, personally, because they actually, their egos personally attach themselves to that religion. So a criticism against the religion is then seen as a criticism against that person himself. But once in a while, I meet someone where that doesn't happen, and where a person says, oh, "Yeah, I, ex I I see what you mean," you know. And sometimes they are gay. Those, you know. oftentimes the men that will accept what I say that are coming from Islam, they are secretly homosexuals because. Those are the only ones that are even at all listening because they have something, some femaleness in their brains. The reason why they can listen to me is because they are men and thus have not been oppressed by their religion. The women that I talk to have been completely completely oppressed and beaten down and so most of them are so broken they can't even listen to what I say at all they will defend the hands that beat them so it's horrible what's going on absolutely horrific so I feel for their animals and their children you know so that's this I feel for all of them, but particularly for those that are being torn into this, into this horrific chaos and hell that's out there. All the innocent beings that are being tormented by that hell, by that emotional hell of Islam. So, but once in a while I see someone who will say, you know, what you said helped me a lot. I actually got a job promotion. You know, that means a lot to me. That that that's that's the the stuff that I wanna see. That's the stuff that makes me feel good, that makes me happy, that my efforts that I've put into these conversations, sometimes I had conversations with people that went over a course of like half a year even. Long, long, long interactions on Facebook, back and forth, often live, live tweet, interactions in, um, in the private chat, you know, so that um, where I try to help these people, just individual people, 
and make their lives better and s make them see, open their eyes. And that's why I have this perfume on now. Perfume is called See By. And it's by Chloe. That is the company. That's the fashion house. It's a fashion designer house. And they make wonderful perfumes. My mother already had one in the 70s, even in the 60s. She had one and she had that for a very long time. That was even, I think that was one of the very, very first perfume oils. Very, very thick and condensed. And I think an oriental floral. Very, very strong and powerful. See by. See by the truth. See the truth, you know. So once in a while I see someone who will have a glimpse and, he, and someone will see that what I'm saying is true and then from, from their real person they will say, yes, you're right. The ego will always say, this is wrong, you can't generalize all of us, you must be a racist, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. I am not a racist, but I'm an Islamophobe, definitely. I am against all religions. Islam is the worst. There's absolutely no doubt about it. And we all see it, you know. No one dares to say it, but we all see it. Trust me, we all see it. The eyes are on you guys out there, on what you're doing. Okay. The whole world is watching. Okay, And I know Donald Trump is going to get reelected because the majority of people trust into him and... They, can, they have seen now that they can trust into him. And that's why they're going to re-elect him, even though they will not admit to this, about this to their friends. So, But they will vote for him. And I thank you, all, all of you, for that. I thank all of you who are going to support Donald Trump and vote for him. I thank you from the bottom of my heart, because... He's helping to make the world better, and he has a lot of leverage in making the world better, and he is making the world better. The whole world, not just this country, he's helping. He's even helping North Korea very gradually. Okay. He is nice to Kim Jong-un, but he is very firm. He, he's not going to let anyone walk on him or run over him, or run over anyone. Okay. He stands his ground. He learned that in business, and you have to do this, or you in business you couldn't survive. So he does it in business, and he does it in terms of psychology and sociology as well. Okay. And that's what we need for the world. It's those people that we really need. So my friend Lisa, she took me to the Kingdom Hall. She took me also to a Bible study in someone's house. And neither one of those events made any sense to me whatsoever. What they were reading made no friggin' sense at all. It made even much less sense than... Then the, the story is stories about Julius Caesar, Julius Caesar, that we learned in Latin in in high school. So it just that made no sense because it had really no, not much <laughs> to give to us to our life and our reality something from way back like thousands of years ago so some de bello gallico you know, about uh, oh, about the the gallian war you know, that made no sense war made never sense to me competition sports never made sense to me you know 
that all of this fighting constantly even with the Trojan horse and what the what the Greeks have done, how they tricked the Roman Empire and blah 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 all of this. And some people find that exciting. I just find that I find it outdated. And when I see sci-fi films, you know, I go like, oh, a sci-fi film. Because I'm into sci-fi, I'm into future visions. And then I see the same old shit again, just with different outfits. <laughs> the same war going on, the same neurosis, perpetuated in people's minds into the future. No, not for me. I do the very best I can to shape the future, to make the future peaceful and loving and warm. And including, you know, those men that right now think that they need to be tough and they need to, they need war. And the guy at the post office that worked there even said he doesn't like pink and, and the, the pink peace stamps. And I said, you don't like peace? And then he didn't know what to say. He obviously doesn't even like peace. It's too boring. His dad told him he needs to toughen up and all of this. Even those kind of guys that are undereducated and anti-educated, they will see, you know, if we make the world a better place, they will enjoy their lives so much more. They will enjoy better food, you know, they will enjoy kind food and whole food their bodies will really thank them for them their hearts are gonna recover literally their amygdalas are gonna recover they're gonna see that the sex feels better when it's peaceful when you know maybe you can allow the woman to be sitting on top of your lap you know while you're lying down <laughs> so you will see that is so much more fun you know, you don't have to be on top always, literally, in any kind of way, you know, in life. Whether that is for sexual pleasures or work-related or whatever, family, whatever, you know. So you don't have to be, you don't have to be tough. You're still a man. And I'm still a woman, and your wife is still a woman, and your kids are still your kids, and your animals are still your animal children. And nothing is going to change just because you think that you let someone else drive your vehicle for a moment. You let your wife drive for a day, you know, whatever, or be in charge or be on top or whatever, you know. So nothing is going to change from that, okay? It just makes it better. So let's, ha let's practice egalitarianism and let's practice real love and compassion, you know, for all, for our animal children and our human children, so... And the animal children are equally precious, very important message, equally precious to your human children. So I'm, in my life, I prefer the papa dog. I prefer papa dogs. So that's just in my life. That's my preference. That's my choice. So cheers to everyone. Take care. Bye-bye.